Nina Marini, hi. Welcome to the South Australian Museum. We're on Ghana land, traditional land of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. It's National Science Week and the theme is Deep Blue, Innovations for the Future of Our Oceans. I'm Leanne Wheaton, I'm the Education Manager here at the South Australian Museum. I'm here with Elaine Viderpil, she's a marine biologist, and together we're going to look at some of the amazing biodiversity in South Australia. Thanks Leanne, it's great to be here. And today we're going to do a tour of the Biodiversity Gallery, looking at some of the amazing creatures we have here in South Australia's marine environment. We're going to meet some of the scientists who are going to take us behind the scenes and look at the collections that we have here um, that the public generally don't get to see. We're going to tell you a lot more about the amazing ecosystems and species living here in South Australia in our marine environment. We're going to talk about some of the innovations being developed by scientists to develop a sustainable future for our oceans. And we're also going to talk about things that each and every one of us can do to look after our oceans and therefore look after our planet. So let's go take a look. Hello, I'm Dr Andrea Crowther and I'm a Senior Collection Manager for Marine Invertebrates Collection here at the Museum. Our Biological Sciences collections have a wide range of animals from tiniest parasites to the largest of whales and dolphins, which you can see behind me. Over three million specimens of animals have been collected over the last 150 years. The collections focus on South Australian fauna, so they are our library of life. The collections allow us to see how species have been distributed over time, so they're really important for historical context. The role of museums in recording our species distribution is really important now that we are losing species. So let's have a look at some of the marine biodiversity here in SA by going to our biodiversity gallery. We're in the biodiversity gallery and the great thing about this gallery is it lets you take a thousand kilometre walk from the hot dry deserts of the north to the deep oceans of the south in about 50 metres. We've taken a transect, which is a line through the map, that moves you through these different habitats and lets you see what lives there. So instead of going for an exhausting four-week hike, you can move through this space in about half an hour. The museum has done all the hard work for you. So now we're going to look at a bunch of the marine environments here in South Australia. We're going to start here at the coast and make our way out towards the open ocean. And each of these displays have been designed very specifically in great detail to show you the kinds of plants and animals that all live together and have evolved over millions of years to interact with each other and with the physical environment in which they live. And that is what an ecosystem is. So it's a very complex and multi-layered uh, dynamic system where all plants, animals and the physical environment interact to form a very balanced and supportive ecosystem. So here we are on a sandy beach and where we see big obvious life. But there's also microscopic life that lives in the sediments of the sand and we call that the infauna. There are animals such as little worms or crabs, different types of bivalves, which are types of mollusks, and things like diatoms as well. There's also evidence of other life too that we can find on the beach. So on this beach here we can see cattle bones, which are from cattlefish, sea urchin tests, which are from sea urchins, and even shark eggs, where the baby shark is no longer part of that shark egg. We're now moving to the sheltered Gulf ecosystems of the Gulf of St Vincent and Spencer Gulf. And these are really unique habitats and ecosystems in South Australia. And it's a really great place to live if you're a little fish or a little crustacean because there's lots of places to hide. They're also really important habitats for recycling nutrients, for absorbing a lot of the carbon in our atmosphere and in our oceans because there's so much photosynthesis being carried out in these forests. So it's really important important for reducing erosion of our shores here in South Australia. Here we are at a rocky reef now and it's a very diverse and interconnected ecosystem. And we actually have a really special rocky reef here in South Australia, up in northern Spencer Gulf at Point Lowly. Every year we get a mass migration of the South Australian 
giant cuttlefish and tens of thousands of animals come together every year for this mass breeding event and they lay their eggs underneath rocky ledges on the rocky reef and there's nowhere else in the world that we know of where this type of breeding aggregation occurs for this species. The final part of our journey across South Australia's marine environments, we arrive at the open ocean. And this is a vast and deep space. And in the deep ocean, we know that light can penetrate down to about 200 metres. And in that surface layer of the ocean, there is a lot of life and a lot of fish and whales and animals that we can see. But if we go deeper, it gets darker and darker. When we reach the bottom of the ocean floor where it's pitch black, there's still an amazing array of life living down there. Very distinct ecosystems, an amazing diversity of plants and animals and many of which we're still only just discovering. There's so much research still to be done in discovering our marine biodiversity. So we've finished our thousand kilometre journey across South Australia, but we've travelled on a little further from the main building of the South Australian Museum on North Terrace, and we've arrived at the Science Centre. And this is a part of the museum that very few people know about, and very few people actually get to see. We're here in the Marine Invertebrates Collection. The Marine Invertebrates Collection is managed by myself and my colleague, Shirley Sorokin. We look after about 23 phyla of animals, and that includes examples like crabs, jellyfish, corals, mollusks, all different kinds that we'll show you a bit later. When a specimen comes into our collection, we make sure we give it an official registration number, we digitise the data into our database, and then we file the specimen away in our collection. We saw our collection taxonomically, which means species that are most closely related, you'll find them closer on the shelves. Here we have a very special specimen that's in our collection. It's a chitin, which is a type of mollusk collected from Tasmania in 1802 by French explorers. We think it's the earliest collected natural history specimen in our museum. Many marine invertebrates are very colourful and beautiful in real life. Once we collect them, we need to preserve them, usually in 70% ethanol. During this process, their colour is often lost, along with patterns that they may have had when they were alive. To keep information like that, we also take photos when they were alive and we keep those digital images and link them to the specimens. A really important South Australian species is a giant Australian cuttlefish, or the scientific name Sepia apama. You might not always see them like this. What you may see is evidence of them from the beach. This is a cuttle bone, which is actually dissected out of a giant Australian cuttlefish. And we keep these in our dry collection here at the Marine Invertebrates. So thank you for joining us and we hope you have a better understanding now of some of the complexity of biodiversity in our southern Australian marine environment.